Hi everyone, thank you so much for okay. coming here yeah. this evening. Um, and those of you who are watching on catch up, we just want to do an apology to start off with that we did not do the live on Thursday and instead did it tonight. The reason that we did this was our lives are just so chaotic at the moment with life changes that we just don't want to rush and give you a subpar podcast. We want to give you the podcast that you deserve and what we want to put forward. So with that apology over, let's move on. And from now on, we shall be doing Thursdays each week, hopefully, with, but we'll let you know. So what is Finding the Why? Finding the Why is a podcast bringing together artists from all around the world to form networking opportunities, to come together in support and help each other and just connect with people, give them ideas, advice. Um, we are here to talk about everything art and we really tailor it around you guys. So if there's something that you want us to talk about one week, please let us know. We've done things from sad to um, special guests. We've done, um, yeah, loads of stuff. <laughs> um, so do make sure to check them out. So much stuff that I've completely forgotten in the moment. <laughs> so what's, how's your week been, Sarah? Um, my week's been um, very different, actually. I've been away and um, I've been scoping out various opportunities, both artistically and um, kind of practically business wise. Um, so, yeah, it's um, I've, I've had a lovely week in the sun, um, but my brain's been constantly ticking over. But um, equally, I have picked up loads of inspiration. Um, I've been on Formentera. Um, which is an absolutely stunning island um, in the Balearics and um, an artist's dream really is it really is you know just you, you just keep coming across little bits and historic sites and um, the scenery and yeah it is just absolutely gorgeous I'm really really hoping that I can get back there because they do get migratory flamingos and I would love to to rock up there with um, when you know when when they're there with my camera and with some painting equipment and yeah do do some more work but uh, yeah it's, it's been very different and there's more of that to come um as i as you well know that i'm kind of working on these kind of these series of retreats so um yeah it's it's been exciting fun but i am really really tired now <laughs> that feels really cheeky to say but that's what traveling does to me i get home and i'm like oh <laughs> How's your week been? Um, it's been busy, actually. Um, so yeah, it's ma it's mainly been taking some time out for myself as well. I keep forgetting to look after myself and just having a night to just chill out and have a cup of tea, watch some TV. And I've ma actually managed to schedule it this week and I feel so much better for it. I feel like I've had so much more energy to keep doing everything 100% that I usually do. Um, so I've been doing my day job, which is manager at the Bachelor Galleries and Memorabilia Framers in St Albans. I have been doing pre-records for artist talks that go live on YouTube next week and the week after for the abstract exhibition and the nature exhibition. Um, and they are just so different and exciting, every single one of them. And I'm so excited for it. So I hope everyone else is too. Um, and that's pretty much all I remember of my week. The rest of it has just been an absolute blur. <laughs> right, yeah. And yeah. Uh, of course we, we missed out on um, gratitude day, which would have been far closer if we'd got to do the Thursday one, but I think that's important to acknowledge. Um, and so we were going to, to do a few of our gratitudes. Um, so I'll let you, I'll let you kick off with that. Okay, cool. So my gratitudes are very simple and probably cliched, but they're just so genuine and close to my heart. So I'm so grateful for my family. They've, just so so supportive and I've just booked me a holiday next year which I'm so excited for next June um I'm so grateful for my little one my baby she's just kept me so grounded um and she makes me want to up level my life so much and be the best version that I can be to be a role model for her when she grows up 
and I'm grateful for you Sarah because this yeah. podcast is literally my hour a week of getting away from life and having a little bit of fun yeah it is fun yeah it is um, and I'm going to return that appreciation of you and my gratitude to you for you know kind of I suppose they say every, everybody comes into your life for a reason and it's mm. kind of it's great that we connected and that we actually managed to to pull this podcast together and um it's you know there's so many opportunities and so much potential for the future it is really really exciting and it, mm. you know when we do have these discussions it makes me absolutely grin um <laughs> and giggle even just with, you know with that excitement um but i don't i'm also i have to say i'm really grateful for my family too my mum who's you know who's always there to support me and always there for the, the important chats and stuff and to my good friend, Ben, um, and Asprey Formentera, because him and his dad have been absolutely amazing. They run this business on Formentera and they have really, really gone out of their way to look after me and made it like a really lovely, special week. Um, and so, yeah, I'm forever grateful for them. I've known Ben since I was about 13 or something like that. So it's really nice that, you know, you have these long, long standing friendships and of course I've got home to my 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 dog and my cat who are just like always there <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic um but there's so much to be grateful for in the world and obviously we can't list them all now um so if anyone is grateful for anything please let us know what you are grateful for in the comments of this or on any of our posts or send us a message and um, because it'd be interesting to hear what everyone is grateful for um, so now that we've got that and we've had our weeks, so um, we're going to go on to the first news article, um, which I am going to throw over to Sarah. Okay, so, um, oh, there, there's the cosmic frog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> had to put it in. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So this is an article um, that is from um, an online website called artistfun.com. And this, it's entitled um, Art and Nature, or yeah, Nature and Art. Um, it, it starts by giving the definition of um, nature. Um, nature, in its broader sense, is equivalent to the natural world, physical universe, material world, and material universe. Nature refers to the phenomena of, of the physical world and also to life in general. Um, it resonates really, really highly with me because kind of the way I see things, and I, I suppose everybody's got their in, own individual perception, we are inseparable from nature in whatever form, um, you know, the breadth of it, um, of, of nature and the implications of it is, is just phenomenal, you know, and as physical beings, we are entirely reliant on nature, which always baffles me that we, you know, we abuse it in the way that we do because without nature we we couldn't eat we can breathe you know um and that's that's kind of without taking into consideration human nature which is also a form of nature and but if if this may if this is making any sense whatsoever it's kind of like a great big venn diagram of various like elements of nature it's a bit like like wellness it's not not just one single aspect um it's absolutely immense um but um, with regards to the lady, um, I think uh, you pronounce it Thanias, or is it Thanias? Thanias, um, I think. Thanias. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, she, she, I mean, she, she states there are endless possibilities and um, inspirations that you can find within nature. So many forms, so many styles and so many topics that you can actually cover you don't have to look that far or even dig that deep, but it's it becomes even more interesting when you do that bit of digging and you start to make links. And I think what she's brought into it is, um, especially with this cosmic frog, which is pictured there, it's um, a series about species and juxtaposed with science and human interpretation um, of nature and universal calculations, which are kind of, you know, they are a bit mind blowing. Um, but the way she's managed to combine it all, I think it makes it really, really interesting. Um, and um, yeah, you know, kind of talking about the approaches that we can have to, to looking at nature and the biodiversity, um, looking at the environment, um, expression and perception 
um, the challenges experienced within nature, um, whether they're the ones that we kind of have come about because we, because of the way we live our lives, or you know, um, or just from what nature, how nature is, um, and you know, there is kind of just I suppose sometimes it's nice. It, it's like gratitude, you know, just being grateful for grateful sake, um, appreciating nature for what it is. You don't actually have to always look so deeply into something to appreciate it or know everything about it to appreciate it not that anybody ever does know everything about ev everything that's you know it's a falsity um but it's it's kind of yeah um personally as an artist as a human being i cannot fail to to separate myself um from nature and despite the four walls that we live you know we live within um, but be inspired artistically but by it. Um, and it's one of the reasons, I suppose, when, when I create, I'm quite diverse. And I might talk a bit later about this, you know, again, and, and put it in a bit more context. But, you know, I'm, I'm always switching medium. Um, and sometimes I, I switch styles, but it's kind of different things speak to me in very different ways. And therefore, I, I kind of let that lead me. Um, but yeah, um, it, I just put a, a note at the bottom about um, nature and art. It's, um, there is actually a British museum devoted to nature entirely and works that have spanned you know, the last um, 1500 years, um, which is likely very worth checking out if anybody's interested and from like, you know, countries all around the world. So yeah, mm. that's... And this article is just so fantastic because what it's doing is it's almost showing people that it takes the artists who are so connected with nature to show people who aren't to make them try and appreciate nature more in all of its diversities even just from a farmscape to the meaning of life to astrophysics to anything like that everything that is around us it takes those that are passionate to try and get that passion into other people who may not have discovered it yet or do not care yet um and this is why i i love this article so much not just the, for the cosmic frog i i do love that but it's also for the context within it so i do urge you to actually have a look at this article because it is incredibly interesting absolutely <laughs> And our next article um, is a little bit more um, on the emotional side. Um, so we, uh, just a quick trigger warning, we are going to bring up, um, so not that much, but just themes that might be upsetting. So they're on the 9-11 anniversary, veterans and refugees went and seeked healing through nature, art, and heart-to-heart -heart conversations. So what happened was so a, a, a man who was creator of arts, he went and did this event where he brought people who suffered from PTSD or survivors of 9-11 or people who saw what's happened and are dealing with really horrible memories to just bring them together and have some speech therapy to share their experiences to create art all together um, and to have nature regenerate them and in doing this it created a space where people knew that they weren't alone and that they had people to talk to and that it was okay that the way that they felt was okay and this is a really good point to make that art is healing but it's not just healing on its own it can be used with other therapies to make you over help overcome what you are dealing with and to reintegrate yourself into society and this is why that we are bringing up this um, article here. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it was veterans, refugees, immigrants, citizens, anyone who was everyone who has dealt with trauma with 9-11 or having to run from war or anything in general, um, just to heal together. It was in the 
Skill Kill Centre for Environmental Education on the 20th anniversary of 9-11 um, to just be able to express themselves, to cry, to open up, to re relate to each other, to support, because it's all well and good. Potentially, it's your family who are your shoulder to cry on. But if they have not been there and experienced something somewhat related to what you've done, they're not going to actually be able to understand what you are feeling. They can empathize, but they can't understand. And in doing this, you are sat with other people who genuinely understand your struggles and can relate in some way. So Ala de Berg is children witness um, sniper victims um, outside of a school in 2004 in Baghdad. Um, this person hadn't cried, was completely numb and being able to do this uh, retreat actually helped them to break down their barrier and come to terms with what they saw when they were at school at such a young age. Um, Matthew Abudashki, a um, bit of a tongue twister there, um, was, um, now, is now a minister in the US Army in Iraq and the Church of Christ and um, has witnessed um, a lot of uh, bad things happen in the army and in doing this helped him to combat that PTSD that you get with being in the front lines of the army so it shows through these stories of people that these retreats help and I do urge those of you who are dealing with um with traumas to seek these types of opportunities where you can just combine talking therapies with art and with nature because you are then getting three hits of um of healing in the same way in different ways um yeah so that's mainly what this article is about yeah i just find the fact that you know i i think this uh, i think they called it a motif um and it was built by volunteers with with this whole event in mind and the fact that it's so rooted in nature and nature is so healing it, it kind of brings you down to earth quite literally, um, but kind of uniting people from both sides of the track who've actually been victims um, to people who've, you know, they've been ones to carry out the act. And I suppose there's been a lot of guilt and a lot of shame, especially kind of, I suppose, people who've been in extreme situations or have had to um, carry out acts that don't really comply with their beliefs, but they've been orders. Um, and you, you know, it's it. There are some very, very taboo issues that have been discussed, and obviously, with them, um, you know, with what's gone on, that these scars can go so, so deep. Um, and the fact that it's it's provided a safe space for these people to discuss their trauma unjudged and just kind of release it, and I suppose trying to you know sometimes you don't always understand somebody but you you know in this situation everybody gathered um with you know with this concept that they, they weren't going to judge they were going to listen and they were going to be open-hearted and compassionate and compassionate enough to kind of try and put themselves in the other person's position i know there was a man who was um who was in the iraqi war and um he basically got put in a position where a child was holding a rifle to him and he was about to pull the trigger and he had to take him out or, you know, he, he took him out. You didn't have to take him out, but it was either, you know, it's like, what do you do? What do you do? Yeah. And nobody that wasn't in that situation, what, what would you do? You know, it's, we can't judge. We can't judge. Um, it's, it's very, very easy to judge, I think. And, um, you know kind of say oh well I definitely do this but I don't really think anybody would know what they were going to do until they were actually in that situation and then it can just go like that you know either way um and so yeah I think if you know that there needs to be more opportunities for people to kind of unite like this and discuss and talk quite frankly 
um, and be able to be open hearted about how they feel, you know, not just on a superficial level and be brave and get on with things, but kind of really to kind of in order to kind of progress themselves and advance themselves in their lives to kind of let go and release and get it kind of get it out and come together. And yeah, so that's. I think that's really true. And um, I was looking earlier at some of the comments of this from people who didn't go, such as why wasn't it just in a town hall where people could talk to? Why did they have to get um, funding from outside to create a retreat in nature? And what I have to say, I have to acknowledge these comments because I have to say it, nature literally revitalizes our bodies we are not um biologically evolved to live in the society that we do now you've got to think we've been around for millions of years we've been civilized for a couple of thousands so to we're not used to living like this if you go camping without any alarms your body literally resets and you don't feel as tired because you're sleeping the amount you need to you are living the way that you need to in the daytime and you are literally reconnecting to the world around you why did they have to do art art can actually help you say without words it helps you express exactly what you're talking to because sometimes you can't find the right words to actually discuss what you want to say and art is the beautiful barrier that helps you and can really show your emotions because you're not just using words you're using colors you're using texture you 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 literally feel what you can put on the piece of paper and I just had to acknowledge that I, I have to be able to stand there and say this is why we actually do need nature and art together not a town hall with a couple of chairs we we need to reconnect and not just reconnect with each other but reconnect with the world around us to help us actually heal on the inside mm. um and that's my little rant about those comments over <laughs> so purest form isn't it nature it when you're kind of outside and exposed to it it's, um, yeah. it is um so now we are going on to 10 artists who celebrate nature through their work um back over to sarah yeah so um as as kirsty said it's 10 artists who celebrate that um celebrate nature through their work um, you know, anything from when you think of where arts come from, it's it spans from cave art to contemporary art. You kind of go into the Tate and you can see all manner of kind of, you know, current um, work in many different forms and with many different mediums, um, expressing inner feelings and um, expressing the changing face of art even. Um, you know, right from Paul um, Cezanne, um, and I think this is one of um, his um, quotes. Um, Painting for nature is not just copying the object, it's realizing one's sensations. Tr um, treat nature in, in terms of the cylinder, the sphere, the cone, everything in proper perspective. And I just really love the way he's, he's, he's described that. Um, now there are you know, many people um, who, who've chosen to use um, nature as their inspiration. As I say, I, I can't, I, I, I can't, I suppose, I don't know, maybe, maybe everybody's inspired by nature. It just depends on what kind of nature. Again, it's a very, you know, it's, it's a perspective thing, isn't it? Because it's nature is so vast. Can any one person really say that they're not inspired by nature? Um, and this is just kind of my reflection on the article, not, going into too much detail you know um but um one um artist that i did pull out was um nives um palmic and she is croatian um, she teaches art um and all, you know all natural forms she's very interested in plant life um and she notes the rhythms and the motifs um she uses cut out composition um, in relation to that and you know it can be um, realistic or abstract um, but kind of you know very very interesting um, Mika as well and Ning, Ningwa, Ningawa 
um, who's who very much more is kind of into. She, I think um, she's from Tokyo and she's a multidisciplin um, multidiscipline artist um, using photo and film. Um, uses very. I think you can see there. I think that's the one with the fish. Um, but very vivid, very dreamlike. Um, and it's just the way different artists have used art to, to kind of say something, maybe something that, that they're feeling inside or something that they've noted that they've gone out and seen. You know, there's all manner of textures in, in nature and kind of movement. I love, you know, kind of um, when you're trying to express something and it's, it's like, it's quite fluid and you, you watch water and, you know, you get that inspiration as well, which is what I'm saying. Can, can, you know, can you actually take, take something and separate us from nature when, when we're being um, inspired? It's because it, it's everywhere. It's literally everywhere. And as I say, kind of human nature is also a form of nature. You know, we, we are kind of more evolved and we have created all kinds of things that, you know, some of them we kind of we've come to heavily rely on, um, but really, what kind of serves us best is still nature. It's it's not necessarily them things because without nature, none of them things would matter. We we could we you know we couldn't use them things anyway. So yeah, but I'm I'm not hard with the point. But this is definitely I'm not going to talk about all of the artists um, in here. As I say, I was I was just going to highlight a couple. Um, but definitely worth having a look and you never know, you might find inspiration in there as well and kind of, you know, finding other people's perspective and it, it kind of might resonate with you and, and trigger a, a train of thought that will lead you to create something, something of your own, something along them lines, but with your own perspective as, as we all do. So yeah, that was the third article. <laughs> Yes, um, I'd definitely say have a look at it, um, even if it's just for inspiration, because as you can see on the screen, all of the artists are just so diverse in the way that they use nature. And so there is something for everyone, even if it's not so much like your work, at least you can appreciate it because they are absolutely fantastic. Um, and we are going on to the 40 winning photos of the bird photographer of the year 2021. And um, again, not going through all 40 artists or photographers um, and know what they want to be called um, because of time. So I picked out my five favorites and as you can see on the screen, they're just so fantastic. Um, and I'm genuinely debating buying some of these prints uh, once I get my paycheck. <laughs> Um, so where did I put it? There, I put it here. So what you can see in the top left is Morning Leck by Levis, Levy Fitz, who was number two on the list and was the Young Bird Photographer of the Year 21. Um, absolutely stunning photo of a cockerel there at sunrise. Um, on the top right, it, at number 10 is the growing up Raymond Hennessy who won for attention to detail um, I haven't been able to find out what type of bird this is uh, it's definitely a baby bird it's as far as I've gotten so if you do know please tell us <laughs> um, in the bottom left is Art of Motion by Nicholas Rusens and this one was for Birds in Flight, at number 16 on the list. A beautiful photography of a hummingbird. Just the movement is stunning. I absolutely love it. Um, at the bottom middle is Chinstrap Penguin by Renato Granieri. Um, and funnily enough, it's about a penguin. Uh, which was the gold award for black and white photography. Um, just the expanse in this is beautiful. The sheer scales play and everything like that. Um, and on the bottom right is The Feather Light by James Rogerson. Um, the silver award for the black and white photographer. Um, so, I mean, this one's just stunning as well of a, I believe it's a swan. Um, the, the contrast, the black and white is just so amazing and is such um, a pioneer to, for 
just the idea of subtraction and subtracting to the correct point that you can still tell exactly what what is in there and so these are from one to one clicks and the article of 40 winning photos of birds of the year 21 so do make sure to check that out because i wish i could have covered all 40 photographers but i just couldn't um because of the time frame yeah i wasn't too sure whether that was this one actually it, it kind of yeah. looks to, it, it's really hard to tell you're right yeah um, but I'm not sure that the group focus ones and I I wanted to say a girl, but I thought maybe ah. that was too obvious. And I'm I'm still not sure. But um I, I do have a few facts, factoids, we'll call yeah. them <laughs> about the other ones. So the chin strap penguin, it's also known as um the ringed or bearded penguin or the stone cracker because of its call. Apparently it's got a terrible call. <laughs> And it's um, it basically it's it, they're found um, around the islands and shores of the South Pacific and at, at, or at, at, uh, I can't speak <laughs> Atlantic Ocean um, and obviously they do have a kind of a bit of a, a chin strap going on um, hummingbirds I think that is an absolutely stunning shot and it's it almost speaks about the universe as well just kind of the light and it's almost like it's set against a backdrop of stars or something it's just incredible but i read somewhere that um the fastest um because you know they, they they do flap their wings quite flap their wings <laughs> they do flap their wings rather fast and um apparently the fastest on record was around 80 beats per second which is phenomenal i can't remember what species of um, hummingbird that was and i'm not quite sure what species of hummingbird is has been um, photographed there but yeah incredible content mm -hmm. um and i think the winner was a guy called alejandro prieto yeah. i probably said that in the entire <laughs> wrong accent I'm <laughs> so I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of mention this in a, in a later episode but yeah I'm, I'm having to get to grips with various different languages <laughs> but, um, but he he photographed um, a, a road runner against the the Mexican border wall um, which was which was quite impressive not what I would have expected as a winner but it was a, it was obviously um, a photograph as a statement um, mm -hmm. and yeah the, you know all all of these people who I think there was about 22,000 entries yeah. so to pick 40 out of 22,000 is, is kind of you know it's a it's a, a task in itself but yeah absolutely please do check them out because mm -hmm. there is some phenomenal work there so we are now going on to show some of our own works um, because What's the point in us talking about nature if we can't show that our artwork is about nature? Um, in two completely contrasting yet completely valid ways of working. Um, so on the theme of 40 winning photos of the bird photographer, we have decided to choose our bird pictures. So um, yes, these are some of my illustrations as anyone who's been watching before knows or might they might not. I work in many different ways. I love photography. I like to sit and I like to illustrate. I go to the easel. I like to paint big and bold. Sometimes I will paint very accurately. You know, if I'm doing oil portraiture, it's kind of very, I aim for hyperrealism. If I'm doing, you know, my elephants are kind of more, I suppose, expressionistic and figurative. Um, but yeah, kind of, I, I, I do, I just love to sit there with my, my sketchbook and I went for a period where I just wanted to draw birds um, and butterflies, in fact, anything with wings, I um, find it very, very satisfying. And I suppose symbolically, it kind of, it probably said a lot about kind of, you know, that freedom and that mindset. Um, and so, yeah, so these are pretty much all African birds. Um, as I say, you, you've seen some of my, you know, my more stylized photography of kind of African mammals, you know, the elephants and the hippos and the giraffe and stuff. Um, and you probably haven't, you know, you've, you've certainly seen the elephants that I've painted and stuff, but you haven't seen a great deal of my, my illustrative stuff. Um, so there is, um, it's the white throated bee eater and we've got the, which was, I saw them in Zambia. 
floating down the river, kind of, you know, building their nests in the, in the banks and kind of, they can be, you know, they're quite noisy, actually. They can be quite aggressive towards each other. Um, I sat and watched the Pied Kingfisher in Uganda and it was a joy. I just sat on the, on the bank around, you know, the, the, the lake and kind of watched it on its little perch and kind of diving every now and again. And then there's the glossy starling. Starlings out there are something else, you know, they're kind of almost got this iridescent sheen to them and they are so beautiful. And you kind of think, what are they? You know, if, you, if you're not sure. And it's like, it's a starling, it's a starling. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just kind of, you know, I, I, as I say, I do have a thing about birds um, and always really have done. I don't know everything there is to know about them. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of, I suppose I'm always learning, but I am a big appreciator of nature and I find it everywhere. And yeah, it's, it's, it's just one of those things. I like to be amidst nature and knee deep in it. I like to go hiking and be out and exposed as long as I'm not cold. I have rain on, <laughs> so I'm not, not the best person to know if I'm really, really cold. Um, and I just find such peace in it and I find it restorative and resetting. Um, so yeah, these, these are some of my illustrations, um, but kind of, as I, as I keep saying, when, you, when you're looking at nature, it is, it is really a perspective thing about what you consider to be nature. Personally, I kind of see it all around and in everything. Um, but you know, if you're kind of narrowing it down, yeah, I've, I've done pieces on, on human nature, but they're much more abstract pieces and they're much more, you know, if, if you're looking at human nature, it's, it's about emotion and reaction. Um, so it makes sense for me, well, you know, um, the way I see it for it to be more of an expressive kind of abstract piece that maybe not everybody will understand, but I understand why I made them marks or why, you know, why I used the colors I did or why I did it like I did. Um, you know, you can look at the, um, the impacts on the planet, um, plant life sentience is a big thing for me you know kind of i i'm a big animal advocate and i love to be around animals and i do my things with projects and stuff so that i find that quite inspiring planetary you, you know you look up there and that is part of the bigger picture of nature isn't it mm -hmm. you you know, you've got gravity and you know all this quantum theory but without all of that and with us and our human nature and our curiosity, you know, we would never think about all these formulas that kind of try to deduce what's going on or what's going to happen and stuff like that. And it, it is just, I find it absolutely mind blowing. I really do. I could like sit, I've sat and had conversations at 8 a.m. in the morning that I've kind of dug so deep. It's like people go away going, has that just happened? <laughs> But as I say, when my approach to, to nature and to my inspirations is it's, it kind of evolves. Um, and, you know, there are some people who kind of look at my work and go, it's not consistent, but it's consistent with the way I see things, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And my perception of them at the time, um, I suppose, to be more commercial about it. Yeah, you maybe have to stick to a certain style to sell it, but kind of outside of that I'm just like about everything <laughs> almost almost everything but I'm, I'm just curious and I love to sit and interpret things and have conversations and kind of go away and think about it and then process it and you know kind of what comes out of it yeah these are illustrations and you can tell what they are hopefully <laughs> But, you know, it's, it's not always the case. Sometimes it, it, it does take a bit more. Um, I, I think that curiosity is such a good thing. Uh, adults lose curiosity to what kids do. Kids are just pure. And to get, I think, some of the most amazing artwork, you have to keep that curiosity alive in yourself and have that spirit. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, as I think as well, what looking at the way we interact with what's around us, you, as we say, nature and the planet, the environment, that's, you know, that could all, that, that also comes into it and our beliefs mm -hmm. as well and how we respond to what's around us is, is quite important and it kind of comes into the bigger picture as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, how can you not appreciate 
nature and you know how can you not be grateful for it it's so true and i absolutely loved your use of color as well oh, thank you <laughs> um so with my work a lot of people know my work with um the astrology that i work with with stars and like and installations and stuff so this piece is actually was actually a part of bird aid auction and um, which is that bird aid is a charity which look after sick and injured birds until they're able to release them back in the wild and um, so i had the absolute honor to be um, invited as an artist to be able to be a part of their online auction so this is what i've come up with a three-piece series of birds um, and it was actually from a tit that was in my garden um, that was just flying around i had some old paper that i cut up uh, which had ink and water um, on because I actually love the way that ink and water reacts and just keeping it completely raw um, and gold pen as well acrylic pen which just adds these beautiful little shines um, and I wanted to keep true to myself if I'm not looking at the stars I'm looking at movement and capturing the movement because when we move if we breathe if we do anything that it sets off a reaction all around you and i see this quite often uh, you move and just the way that i see <laughs> um so i wanted to capture the movement of the bird um which i feel like i've done um uh, and really that's all i have to say about that piece um i guess that i'm really not so much looking at what's in front of me but i'm looking at their effects and how they um and how everything just interacts with each other um i go for a very philosophical side of thinking rather than um literally thinking so i do so much reading on uh, mathematics science quantum physics uh, string theory anything complicated i love to read and try and get my head around because life is so interesting and one of the most innate questions is why are we here and i just want to understand why i am here a little bit more or at least come to some sort of um acknowledgement of finding inner peace in myself um, as to why I'm here and how I am here and how everything just interacts with each other because there's this um, fantastic program on Netflix at the moment um, it's, it's something about mushrooms and it's basically the, the lead person of it is about his journey to being quite a famous um, mushroom scientist and it all started out through magic mushrooms there is this beautiful moment in it the uh, the animation is so wonderful the way that fungi or fungi as i think it's supposed to be pronounced from that program um is interconnected the entire ecosystem it literally trees use each other well use this fungi to be able to talk to each other to be able to pass over danger to talk to its even its babies its seedlings that it has it, the entire ecosystem is connected by these myceliums millions and millions of them and but we don't see it and we don't know it and the it blows my mind um, how just even that much is connected. There's th there's theories that trees send pulses to up to 50 feet away. So when you're walking in nature, you can literally feel their pulse um, as you're walking through. And that's why a lot of people are calmer when they go into nature. It's literally this entire surroundings. We are connected in ways that we don't see. And I think that is literally my idea of how i'm trying to figure out nature in the least long-winded way as possible <laughs> yeah it's really hard to be succinct when you're trying to convey such a complex subject though isn't it you it can, really I is very well and I, I love i love those three pieces they're gorgeous thank you um 
I could, I could write a thousand. Please don't disappear again. <laughs> you look like you're getting ready to breathe. <laughs> At least you can still hear me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I could write a thousand essays on what interests me and I still wouldn't be able to explain all of them in, in enough words. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you're along for the ride, <laughs> chat to me at any time because <laughs> I could talk about anything interesting um so yeah I'm gonna stop sharing now so that brings us into our final bit which is our uh, five minute art challenge um we are are we finger painting we can do can do. I had this brilliant idea midweek that since we are doing nature that we should finger paint because animals don't have paintbrushes unless we give them to them and I much prefer finger painting than painting with my mouth so <laughs> how are we getting on? Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a mess. No, no, I'm crying yeah. that it all over my clothes. <laughs> I was like that. Straight out. Straight out. How are you getting on? I think I'm done. I've made enough of a mess. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think I'm done as well. I will stop the music. Oh, there we go. I will find something to wipe my fingers on. <laughs> yes. I managed to uh, empty half a tube of paint. <laughs> I was like, no, not that much. <laughs> Never mind. I'll probably come home and find Nuru's walk through it. And oh, yeah. Once again, my, my bed sheets are white, so I will have nice <laughs> purple, purple print all over. So if anybody wants to buy a nice um, cat, well, a, a bed sheet that's a, cat, a cat's kind of you know very <laughs> and i'm your girl <laughs> yeah i've just noticed my cup's very in theme of today a terrifying wow. bird <laughs> i like it <laughs> <laughs> so right. how did you get on i made a mess you made a mess <laughs> so i made a very messy bird in a tree Bad. that's the beak uh -huh. their wings Yes, yeah, I like it. <laughs> I have to say, it's it's um, again. I think it's about being in the medium. It's like clay. It it's quite satisfying, really. I, yeah, yeah, I'd suggest you know even like doing an even bigger piece and just going for it. Yeah. Um, and you you don't know what shapes and forms are going to come out of it. So I basically just started, and it looked like a tower, <laughs> but. The, this is mine. Uh, um, it's in... well. I, I, as I say, I was talking about um, birds and butterflies. So I love it. <laughs> seriously, <laughs> that, so there's, there's birds and there's butterflies, and we will. We we're, we're kind of a bit behind on posting the art challenges, but we will post the art challenges at yes. some point. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that's mine. And, you know, I, I love these colours. I went for a period, every piece I painted had these colours in. And mm. obviously I've gone back to that as well. Maybe it's symbolic. I don't know. Um, but there you go. Yeah, that's that's my piece inspired by nature. But I like it. <laughs> <laughs> if um, anyone has joined in at home, please do make sure to either send it to us or tag us in it and we will reshare it because we love seeing what you guys have done at home. Um, because I'm sure it was a thousand times better than what we've done. <laughs> um, it's fun. It's, it's fun. <laughs> exactly. It's all fun. <laughs> um, and if you have enjoyed what you have seen tonight, please do make sure to like, comment, share and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, as most of you probably know, we are unfunded and is you know so we don't get money from youtube we don't get money from funding sources at the moment so your support is really really important to us um and yeah so next week who have we got sarah next week so next week um we have 
um, the founder um, of God's Hope Refugee Foundation in Uganda, who I work with at the moment, I'm Goodwill Ambassador for, and they have um, some amazing art and craft projects with the refugees, to, you know, to give the, the life skills, it, it provides a certain catharsis. And um, yeah, it's, it, you know, you've got the therapeutic value and yeah, building confidence as well. So um, we're going to chat to him. I think he's going to be um, present with um, a member of the community, which is exciting. And they're going to be showing some of the work that's going on um, with regards to the art project. I know they have a children's art project and they also have uh, a vulnerable women's um, crafting project where they go along the craft and they talk and, you know, they, they talk their way through things and experiences. Um, and that's just amongst um, many other things. I think they're wanting to start up a, phot a photography project as well. So we'll be giving you more details on that next week. And if you're interested in getting involved or helping or kind of hearing about God's Hope and the amazing work that they're doing out there, then please do tune in. Um, equally, if you like, if you'd like to check out any any of our work, if you know any of what we said it interests you or resonates at all. Um, Kurt, you can find Kirsty's work at um, at Kirsty Tebs Art on, on yes. Instagram. And yeah, I think um, yeah, her work's amazing, and you can see all, all the stuff that she does with um, the gallery as well. I can be found at Sarah Hardy Art, or my other account. My older account is Vivid Lily Art. So mm -hmm. there you go. Um, they're, they're all on Instagram. So please feel free to to check us out and leave a comment or yeah just just connect with us drop us a message that'd be lovely it would um and that is everything for tonight um i thought we had something else to say but we don't <laughs> Uh, we appreciate every single one of you who comes here live as well as those of you who watch on repeat um, we are doing this for you guys if you have anything that you want us to cover we are more than happy to do so so please do let us know um, because as we've said we we have done over 20 episodes now of loads of different ideas social media marketing um, sad mental health um, I think we've done the cure curating and pop-up exhibitions so we will do diverse things for you guys and tailor it completely to what you need to do so thank you so much for watching us tonight and those of you watching on repeat and we will see you next episode have a good week absolutely take care stay well bye, -bye. bye.